Today we're going to look at the analog to digital conversion section of the Arduino Uno. So let's come down here and take a look at some hardware. This is a simplified version of the analog to digital conversion hardware. I'm going to come back to that section on the top in just a sec. But first I want to focus on this area in here. This is the actual analog to digital converter. We have a 10-bit digital to analog converter, which feeds a comparator. And this conversion logic up here is a successive approximation register. So after a series of uh, estimates, basically approximations, we will arrive at an appropriate value. And this will trigger, ultimately, uh, a conversion complete signal, which we can use. Um, on this end, we have a series of analog inputs. Notice there's only one converter, but there's several different inputs that we can have. Uh, this is achieved through the use of an, uh, a multiplexer. So we can program the multiplexer to grab one of these inputs. You can think of this as sort of a hardware, uh, uh, like a rotary switch, basically, that goes through and selects these. Now, to program this, as well as the operation of the converter itself, we have a series of registers. So here's a, uh, uh, the ADMUX register. This is the multiplexer. There's a series of bits over here that control which of these inputs down here are selected. Um, there's actually four bits, but on the UNO, we only use the bottom three. There's a series of other uh, bits in here. The chosen reference that we want to use, a couple bits for that. Uh, there's this ADLAR bit, which is a uh, left adjust. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a sec. And then we have the uh, control and status register. So there's a series of items here, for example, um, when we want to start a conversion, things of this nature. Um, and of course, very important are the uh, two registers for the value, the conversion value itself. Now this is a 10-bit converter. Of course, this is an 8-bit processor. We have an 8-bit data bus. So we have to come up with two individual bytes, two 8-bit bytes, to hold this 10-bit value. Now there's going to be a question in terms of how we arrange those 10 bits inside the 16, and we'll look at that in just a sec. So there's several ways in which you can use this. Uh, the typical way is a one-shot. In other words, we simply sort of ask for a conversion. When we get a value, there we go. Basically, a, an analog voltage is sitting out here on one of these input pins. We select which pin we want, and then we get a digitized version of that value, and sort of off we go. That's one way. It's also possible to have the conversion triggered by some external uh, signal, right? We could have an external signal um, or an interrupt, something like that, that'll do the, do the uh, conversion start for us. Or we can have a free running system, in other words, where it's continually sampling. Now, the sampling uh, logic that we have in here is not fast enough to do uh, something like high quality audio, like CD quality audio. It's not fast enough for that. Although you could uh, perhaps get some um, voice quality, telephone quality, mono, auto, uh, mono audio out of this. We're primarily going to um, look at the single shot version. So let's take a look at the analog read function. This is a fairly simple function to use. You simply give it the Arduino pin that you want, and it's going to return to you an integer value that's going to range from 0 to 1,023. So 10 bits, 2 to the 10th is 1,024, right? So 0 to 1,023. Now, if you're using a standard 5-volt um, reference, basically what ends up happening is that 5 volts is cut into 1,024 pieces or steps which gives you just a, a smidge less than 5 millivolts, right? 4.9 millivolts per step, okay? Now, you can also set um, the reference source. There is a separate function called analog reference. I'm going to stick with the 5 volt system for now. One thing to be aware of is this is 0 to 5 volts. This is unipolar. You can't have a negative input voltage here, 
right? So if you are trying to look at a signal that swings positive and negative, you're going to have to come up with some interface circuitry to do a DC shift on that so it's always a positive DC uh, voltage, okay? All right. So analog read's fairly straightforward. You want to get a value off an input, you simply call analog read with the pin, you get a number back. Boom, that's simple, okay? Um, this is actually, as we'll see, a uh, right justified value. So you're going to get, even though it's a 16-bit number, you're going to get a value between 0 and 1,023, right? Just the bottom 10 bits are actually used. The top 6 bits are ignored. They're always set to 0, okay? All right, so let's take a look at some of these registers that we have. Um, the first one I want to look at is this uh, ADMUX, the multiplexer, because it's fairly straightforward. The bottom four bits here set up um, which input you want, right? Um, on the UNO, we're only using the bottom three. Then we have the reference bits, which we'll look at. And this is the ADLAR, the, the um, left adjust result bit. So um, we can set or clear that depending on how we want this thing to look. The um, control and status register over here, the ADC SRA, has another series of bits in it. Um, the most important one that we care about, um, besides the enable bit right here, is this ADSC, which is a start conversion. Basically, we set this to start a conversion, and then when the conversion is complete, the hardware will clear this as a, a signal to us, as a flag to us, so we can periodically check that bit to see uh, when it gets cleared, and then we know the conversion is done, all right? Now, back to this um, ADLAR bit, this left adjust result. So here's your two uh, bytes, your two 8-bit two values for your output, right? This is the ADC high and the ADC low. So depending on how we have this bit set, you can see what's going to happen. So ADC 0 through 9 are the actual bits that we have, the 10 bits. So um, if we set this left adjust result true, if we set it high, then we can see what's happening, right? These bits are all pushed off to the left, and the bottom six bits are ignored. On the other hand, if it's cleared, it's, it's uh, right justified, so we use the bottom 10, and the top six are ignored, right? These are basically zero filled, right? Um, minor thing, when we read these, we have to read the low byte first and then the high byte. Reading the low byte basically locks access to the high byte so that the converter, you know, if we were sort of in the middle of something, it can't overwrite that. Okay, so let's now go take a look at the code itself. So I've got a cleaned up version of analog read here. Okay, kind of a short little function. This returns an integer value, right? It returns a 16-bit value, and it takes the pin number, right, an 8-bit value for the pin number, the analog pin that we're looking for. Here's an undocumented little thing. Um, notice if the value is greater than 14, we subtract 14 because there's a 14-unit offset between the channel or the pin number. So you can actually do it either way. Um, these little undocumented things are... are best to sort of ignore because you never know what's going to happen in the future. Things might change. In any case, um, we now are going to set some values for the ADMUX. This is the, the multiplexer uh, register. So we take that pin, right? We AND it with hex 7. So what does that do? That clears all the bits above the bottom three bits. And then we're going to OR that with this. This is a global analog reference. Um, this will be set up in the analog reference function, but um, this is pushed up six bits. Now, I want to go back and look at what's, what's happening here, right? So this gets pushed up six places, and um, pin gets uh, ORed with that after the um, top bits, except for the bottom three, right? The top bits are all cleared. So let's go back and look at the ADMUX. And, okay, so here's the bottom three right? So all, all the other bits were cleared off. Then what we did is we pushed up six, right? Count them up, six for the reference bits. So that fills those. And ADLAR is cleared. So if ADLAR is cleared, zero, right? 
whole thing is right justified. So that sets up what we need for this. Okay, so we've got left justification. Um, we've got the appropriate item in the multiplexer selected. Now we just need to start the conversion. So SBI is a macro, and this uh, reduces to a single machine language instruction, and it's just basically a set bit. So it sets ADSC, which is start conversion, in the control and status register. Right? So, boom. Now what? We have to wait for the conversion to finish. So we just have a while loop here. Okay? And remember what happens. This is cleared. This bit is cleared when the conversion's done. So this is a busy wait loop. It just basically sits here and just checks to see if this bit is set in this register. If it is, it just keeps on going. Right? Eventually, when the conversion finishes, it's cleared. This uh, test right here, bit is set, comes back false. The while loop is done. Okay, we've got the conversion. Now we grab the low and the high bits, or bytes, excuse me, right? Put them in a couple of local variables, low and high. Now we combine them up. The high has to get pushed up eight bits. And then we or that with the low, right? The, the eight bits on the bottom. And bingo, we've got ourselves a 16-bit value, which is returned. Okay, there's our 16-bit return value. And that's essentially the way it works. So this works really nice for this sort of single shot kind of thing where we have maybe a temperature sensor out there that's part of a, like a voltage divider, um, maybe a, uh, a pressure sensor, like a um, force sensing resistor, for example, something like that, or a light sensor. If it's part of a voltage divider, then it becomes an environmental sensor because the internal resistance will change. And if it's part of a voltage divider, that means the, the voltage that's produced, of course, shifts. The voltage becomes proportional to whatever it is we're sensing, voltage, light, pressure, and so forth. And that just gets turned into a 10-bit uh, value, value from 0 to 1023, and then we can use that however we need to, right? So very nice little function. There you go.